Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College. Uh, today, we're going to look at how to uh, how we might want to do curve fitting in kaleidograph. So this is what we're after today is, is, is fitting some curves in kaleidograph. I've shared my window with you uh, so that you can see some kaleidograph. Let's just look at what we've done here. Um, I was going to build some noise into this, but we'll talk about how to do this later. So I did not do that. So I created a unit series here. Uh, well, we have other videos on how to manipulate data in Kaleidograph and do all sorts of other things. So this is all just added bonus stuff that you can see elsewhere. Uh, so I created a, a I used the macro unit series here uh, to create a series. And we'll call that time in seconds. And this is signal in counts, for example. And I have signal one and signal two, and I generated signal one and signal two uh, by creating a an exponential uh, an, an exponential decay. And I had a different weighting factor out front. You see, that's where it started. And then I had a different time constant inside here. Uh, so this 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 sort of mimics uh, what you might find in an experiment where you had uh, radioactive decay, and there are two different species in there that are decaying, and they have different half lives. And so you see this one starts with more signal, uh, but then it goes away much more quickly. So I made a shorter half-life, uh, a shorter a shorter time constant for this one than I did for this one, so that at later times, this one takes over. So you have two exponentials right there. We're going to fit this as two exponentials down the road a little bit, but we're going to also talk about other things we might do. Uh, if you're taking the Physics 182 class with me. Congratulations. I, I can't imagine a, a, a greater reward in life. Uh, but if you're taking that with me, uh, then uh, one of the things we're going to do is try to really work hard on understanding uncertainty in fits. Now, there's not going to be much uncertainty in the fit here because uh, we have um, we have a, 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 I, I didn't add noise to this. So these are actual real exponentials. So the data points are going to lock right onto our curve fits when we do this. We hope they lock right onto our curve fits. But for example, if we wanted to figure out the uncertainty in this fit, we certainly could do it. We, we, we will develop the tools and be able to figure out the uncertainty in a multivariate regression and to think about how we're going to get the uncertainty in the different parameters. But it's always going to be much easier for, do, to do, for us to do this with lines. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take the data and to see what would happen if I, for example, uh, took the logarithm. Let's try that. Let's take the logarithm of this column and say, uh, so, so what I've done is I've clicked this uh, down chevron here uh, that, that, and opened that up to give me column numbers across here. And so I'm going to come out here and I'm going to write a formula in here that says, let's make C4 equal to uh, the natural logarithm of C1. Okay, what the heck? Let's try that one and see what that looks like. And we'll play with it. Okay. Um, and, and so we're going to go in here and we're going to say uh, function uh, and I'm going to pull the natural logarithm. I'm going to look around and say, there it is. I, I knew what it was, so I could have done that without doing that. But uh, you can find different functions that you might use in there. And I'm going to say, I'm going to make the natural logarithm of C1, we said, and see what it looks like. Interesting. Interesting indeed. So uh, let's go ahead and label that column as the, the natural log of signal one. So we've done that. And I'm going to make a graph of it. So I'm going to come up here to gallery and do a scatter plot. Remember, we always like to do scatter plots. We don't like to imply that we know what's going on between the two data points. And I'm going to see what that looks like. Ah, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Looks kind of like a straight line, right? Uh, if you've watched the other videos we've done out there, we don't necessarily like that uh, color. Or um, So we're going to make all of this black. And we don't like those big round dots so much. So we're going to make a dot that looks like that and maybe even make it a little bit smaller. Sort of the typical thing that we do. Uh, we don't like the grids. I could save the... I could save it so that it doesn't have those grids on there all the time. Let's just forget this for right now. Um, leave the grids on there. Uh, what we're going to do 
is it's actually really hard to tell that that's not a linear fit. There's so many data points in there. Uh, so I'm going to blow this up a little bit uh, just so you see. Uh, I'm going to make that go to 15, for example. Uh, so now you can see individual data points in there. Um, and so that's good. Uh, let's actually let's actually make it go to 30, 33. There you go. So you see individual data points across there. Uh, I can I can change my axis over here. You've seen us do this before, so we don't need all of that there. Now, one of the important things to remember when you're doing curve fitting and kaleidograph, changing the axes here is not getting rid of the data that's out here. So if there's data out there beyond what you can see, you're still fitting it, okay? If you want to just fit a section of it, you come back over here and do this, highlight this and say, oh, wait a minute, we should have done this uh, sort of this direction. I only wanted that data like that. And now if I plot that, now if I do a graph, I can say gallery, uh, scatter, and do time on the x-axis and natural log of signal on the y-axis and plot it. And there we go. And look at that, all of the changes that I made to the graph as my defaults showed up in this new graph. So once you make changes at the start of a session, you can change style. So when you close out a kaleidograph, if you if you say uh, save style, it will change all of these changes that we made in here. If we got rid of these um, uh, at, at the, these these grids and other things, uh, the data uh, made these black and we made these smaller. All of those changes would be saved for the next time we started a session. Uh, so if I saved style at the end, that's what this would be. But what I'm going to come up here now and do curve fit. Uh, that's what this one's about. So I should stop jabbering about other things. So I selected linear and I'm going to click on the column that I want to fit. And I'm going to say, okay, and there's the curve fit. Uh, and there's the there's the function. It says y is equal to 1.0986 minus 0 0.018182 times x. And we'll not worry about what that r value is uh, right now. We can talk about that later. But um, but it's a good fit. It, it hits every data point because again, I didn't build any noise into this. I come up here and double click on this. And if I go to curve fit, I I, I like the red maybe for the curve fit. But I don't want this to, um, I want it to be a little bit thicker. Ah, there it is, a little bit thicker. Uh, I could make it a little bit thinner. I could make it a different color if I decided, well, what the heck? I want my curve fit to be light blue. I would never, under any circumstances, want my curve fit to be light blue, but there it is. Okay, so you can see the curve fit, and that's probably a little bit too thick on there. But you get the idea of what you can do in there with this curve fit. So now what we'll do in physics 182 is we will learn how to, uh, we'll just spend a lot of time figuring out how to tell the uncertainty and the slope and uh, the intercept of a linear fit like this. And so anytime you can linearize an equation and do this kind of fit, do it. Make a linear equation, fit it this way, and we'll work on getting the uncertainties out of the slope and the intercept. So, so that's all to come. Um, what we'll do now is we'll go back and we'll say, let's do a graph, a ga back, again, back up here to gallery, which is going to be scatter plot of time on the x-axis. And let's just do signal one for now. So this is just one of our radioactive decay species in there, for example. And there's our exponential curve. Okay. Uh, let's fit, see if we can fit it with an exponential curve. Oh, look at that. That's a choice that we have is exponential. Let's try it. Uh -huh. <laughs> We can't see that stinking green, uh, light blue line in there. So let's go back to our curve fit setting and make it red again. And we should be able to see it on there. We can't see it on there. We can't see it on there because the data points are filling everything up. We knew that before. If we expand the axis, we'll be able to see the fit. Uh, so if we go from zero to 22, for example, there's the fit laying right on top. And again, it's a perfect fit uh, because we didn't build any noise into this. So there it is. Y is equal to three times e to the minus uh, 0 0.018182x. And that happens to be the formula that I put in uh, to generate that data. So I get the formula right back out from our curve fit. What our curve fit's doing, okay, we're not going to go into this a lot right now, but what our curve fit is doing is our curve fit is walking around. It's it, so, so think of it this way. Think about the way our regression, what our regression doing is, is, is it's trying 
to, to fit. It's, it's got all these data points and it's trying to fit uh, different parameters like that three and that 0 0.1, 0 0.018182 right there. It's varying those parameters a little bit and seeing if the average deviation of the data points from the line gets bigger or smaller as it varies these things. Now, the more complex the fit you do, the more parameters there are to fit. There's a lot of different directions it can walk with those variables. So it's, it's a complex it's a complex system where it's out there trying, not complex variable, but it's, it's, it's complicated. Let's say it that way. It's a complicated system where it's walking in different directions and seeing if the fits get better or worse, better or worse, better or worse, better or worse. And, 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 and so it's, it's trying to, to find a, what I would call a local minimum. It's looking to say, as I, as I vary all these parameters, this is the minimum deviation. This is the minimum variation the data points have from the fit. Um, and if I walk away from this, it gets worse in every direction. Now, that may not be a global minimum. You may have to go out in different directions and sink down and, and see, oh, there's a better fit someplace further off. But, but think of this as a vast plane to fit these parameters. And you're walking out in all kinds of different directions. You can get lost on that plane in a hurry and the thing can blow up. And we're going to see that in just a minute where we write our own fits here. OK, uh, so let's actually try to fit this. So uh, this data that we just had, let's actually try to fit that curve. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to take this fit off. Um, I'm going to say, OK, forget forget that. Um, I'm going to do this. Um, cancel that too. And so what I really want to do is I want to come back up here to curve fit and just remove that. It's gone. Okay. So the curve fit is taken away from what we just did. And now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to write my own curve fit. So up under here under general, I can say, well, there's exponential decay and I can define that. And so that's already written there for me. I could write this completely from scratch, but it's already written there for me. It says M1 m1 plus so that's added to everything else so that's a vertical offset i'm going to leave that in there and to say we have this vertical offset i didn't build any vertical offset into my data so zero should be the best fit for that and then it's got plus m2 that's the thing that's out front and if you remember that was three so we're going to give it a starting guess we have to give these things starting guesses i'm going to give this a starting guess m1 a starting guess of 0 0.1 okay and say, well, now let's um, let's let's do this, and let's say uh, I, I really think it's zero, the vertical offset, but I don't like to give anything zero in case it gets confused and tries to divide by that zero or do something funky out there. Um, I usually don't don't give it an actual value of zero. M two is this uh, 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 M two is this factor that was out front that was three. Uh, let's give it uh, two point eight. Yes, close. You want to get close enough so that it finds that local minimum and starts to go down in there. If it's too far away, it's just wandering around and can't find it. M3 was 0 0.018, as we recall. These other things it wasn't very sensitive to. Something that's hidden inside an exponential, it's very sensitive to. So let's give this 0 0.15 and see if it can find that fit. Okay, select it and go. It did it. It found it pretty quickly, right? And so there it is. It says this is the best value that it found. Uh, it found uh, 10 to the minus 8 uh, for, for the thing we thought was going to be 0. So it effectively found 0. It found 3. It found 0 0.018 so far. And there's the fit. This error, you should just ignore. Uh, it. What that is, is it comes from saying, it's going iteration, 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 walking, 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 trying the different variables. Are we getting closer to that local minimum or are we not getting better? Are we getting better or worse, better or worse? And it tells you how big the step in variable was between the, the previous step and the step where it called it done. And so that was the step. That, and so that's probably not the way we want to be thinking about error or uncertainty. It just tells you that's the that's how big a step, how big the difference was between the two most recent steps in the curve fit iteration of that data. And that's not what we're looking for right here. So your best bet is to just ignore this column that says error out here. Um, well, that's that's advice from my physics 182 students. Other people might have other, other goals for that. So if you're out there watching this someplace else, um, then, then, then you can make your own decision about what you want to do with that that error column. Uh, so anyway, that was a good good value for fit. Let's go back and let's let's do this fit one more time. Let's come in here and say, okay, 
we could let, let's actually do that. I'm going to actually get rid of this. This is what I meant to say we wanted to do right here. I'm going to delete that column because I don't believe in it. OK, so I'm going to say, OK, for our purposes, we're just going to have those values uh, that we want to keep right there. Maybe I don't care what the chi square and the, and the R value are for my purposes as well. Or maybe here's something you can do. Let's actually do this. What was M1? M1, you see it up here, but that's actually called the um, offset. So I could write that as offset, vertical offset. There it is. If I wanted to change M2, I could write M2 as something else as well, right? And so I can change the font. I can change the color. I can do all of this stuff in here and manipulate what's got what's on my graph down here. So we could do all of that stuff. But let's for, for now, let's go back to do curve fit again. And... Let's do general exponential decay and let's get rid of it. And now let's do one more time. Let's try the uh, general exponential decay and define it. But I'm going to now make mistakes up here where I said 0 0.15. I'm going to call that 0 0.01. So I'm not anywhere close uh, to that. Now I'm going to call that 0 0.001. I'm not anywhere close to that value. I'm going to say, okay, and we're going to try to fit again. Ah, it found it. Goodness, that thing's good. Um, so let's try again. Let's come up here to curve fit and let's do general exponential decay. The default values, the default starting values in here. Exponential decay defined. The st default starting values were one for everything, right? These are, remember, this is where you're guessing the values of your parameters are at the beginning and seeing what we what, what what it does. So we're gonna put everything back to, to one and see what happens. Let's try to fit. Ah, syntax error was going too fast. That needs us, I deleted my semicolon there. I see I made that 21, that's okay. It found it again. Okay, so it's doing a really good job. I have such good data there. It's, it's, it's so easy to find it. I was hoping we could make this thing blow up uh, let's try one more time, and then we're going to give up. We're going to we're going to quit doing this um, and move on to something else. Um, I get uh, uh, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to define the starting value here to be 1,000, uh, really be far away from where we're headed. Say, OK, uh, single singular coefficient matrix. And you see the fit looks like it's down here and it gave me zero values. Uh, so if you see something like that where the fit isn't anywhere close to your data and you've got all of these values in here, um, it, it gave you the singular coefficient matrix error. Uh, what that means is it, it just couldn't find the minimum. It just, it just wasn't finding the local minimum of the fit. You weren't anywhere close enough to the data for it to figure out, oh, I need to go this direction to fit the data that we have in, in, in place right there. So, so that's all good. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get rid of that window and I'm going to come back and I'm going to actually plot a function, um, data, uh, gallery, gallery, we're going to do a linear scatter plot of time on the x-axis again, and we're going to do total signal, the sum of those two columns over here uh, on the right, and there's a plot, okay? So we've got these two different, um, these, these two different exponential functions that are in there, and let's try a fit. Let's see if we can fit it with a, a, an exponential decay. We didn't do any definition. Okay, it tried to fit. It gives you some parameters. It says, this is our best fit parameters right here. Uh, and you see they're very different from what we had before. And so it worked okay up here, <laughs> but it didn't work okay down here so much. It really missed. And you see that it's, it's the best it could do, but you would probably make a decision that's not good enough. Why is it not good enough? Because it's not a single exponential. It's a multiple exponential. So let's try to adapt that curve fit. Let's come back up here. We could just define fit one. We could make a brand new fit, uh, edit a brand new fit that we want to, but let's just use this fit and we're going to define it up here. 
we're going to say it's M1 plus what we have right there, you see, uh, M2 times E to the minus M3X. But we're, now we're going to actually do this. We're going to say plus M3. No, no, no. We already used M3. M4 times X. We're just going to mimic that formula form that's in there. And we want it to be X to the minus M5 times X. Okay. I think that works. But we have to give it starting values for all these things. So we want uh, M2 to be what it was before was 3, I think. And this was point uh, 018. Now we put a semicolon in and we say M4, give it a starting value uh, for the weighting factor for this second exponential decay term that's in there. And that weighting factor, if I recall, I gave it, I was 12 uh, when I built that. Uh, M5 is going to be, um, I don't remember what we did for M5 when I built this. So I'm going to say M5 is equal to um, point one over 5.2, I think. Uh, 0.2 is what I put in there. Uh, so we're going to say 0.2. We're going to give it a try. Okay. So what we did, look, look at what we did. We took this term and we added a term just like that to the term that was already there. So it's two exponentials, one radioactive element that's decaying, another radioactive species that's decaying. And we gave it our best guesses for starting values for each of those things. Okay. I screwed up my syntax there. M5, M4, right there. It looks like there's a, a an inadvertent comma. M3 is 0.18. Okay, so this suggests, again, that it didn't fit very well. It didn't like uh, what we did. Uh, it looks even worse to me. So we need to go in and try to do this uh, fit again to say, so M1, it gave us a, an offset of 1. That's not a very good offset. We want that offset to be close to 0. M4.2, M2 was 33 and 12. And so that was a, 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 that thing really blew up on us quite a bit. You look at the uh, uncertainty, this, the size step was huge in there. Uh, so this was not a very good fit. You see uh, that the steps between uh, the two parameters that we fit. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to look to say, okay, um, what we had was, does it uh, 0.2, it was 0.2, not 2 uh, that we, we put in there. That's right. Um, 0 0.2, 0 0.018. That all seemed to be right. Um, so let's try to fit this again. Let's come back up here and let's do our general exponential decay. Take that off. Okay. And let's just do the general exponential decay again. We have the stuff that we built in there before. Let's go through and walk to see what we did. We want that to be uh, 0 0.01, let's say. We don't want that much of an offset in there. Um, M2, we thought should be 3 is okay. And 0 0.018 for that is what I'm remembering that was. Uh, 1 over 55 uh, is what we had in there for that. Plus M4 we think is 12 should be that and m5 is 0 0.02 um okay it's just not try it's just not fitting well um so i it should be able to do get a closer job than that it's really struggling with this m2 value uh and m m3 value you see that it's not coming anywhere close uh, to what these things are. Um, so you see that it's it's blowing up right here and, and not doing a good job for us at all uh, at these at these long term 
uh, out here because that's where this this one with the faster decay has disappeared and the one with the longer decay time is still going on. So we're going to try one more time here. Uh, general exponential decay, define and see if we can figure out what it is that maybe we've been doing wrong in here. M4 exp minus M5 star X. I think we forgot our decimal point in there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so this is the way we diagnose what goes on. We do wrong. We needed a decimal point in there. Uh, it was, so we were giving it minus eight. We were giving it 18 uh, as a starting value for this. I'm surprised it didn't give us a singular coefficient matrix. I'm really am surprised it didn't blow up on us. Let's try that now. Uh, there we go. Uh, so this is the way you would diagnose going through something like this. And you can see that it fits right on. Uh, again, it has to fit right on because I didn't build any noise into this data at all. So if we just look between 40 and 60, for example, it's going to fit right on out at the end too. Uh, 55 and 44. Yep, look at that. It's the date that fit right on. So this gives us our best our best values for each of those parameters we put in. So what we did was we summed two exponentials. Um, one of the things we'll do, so this is, this. hopefully this is get you started. This You get to see how to do various things with curve fitting with the data, how to diagnose problems uh, like we had right there to say, oh, I see what's going on. This is why this wasn't working. Let's change this to this and let's do this. And the whole thing should work for you there. So hopefully you can see how to use the canned fits that are in there and how to write a fit or adapt a fit like we did here for the double exponential decay. One of the things we will do in our Fundamentals of Physics 2 class, our Physics 182 class, is we will make histograms and fit Gaussians to histograms. And sometimes those histograms might be of two different things and so have two different means. It might be a bimodal uh, distribution. And so we need to fit two Gaussians and you need to do just what we just did here. Have one Gaussian fit and then add a second Gaussian fit to it. Uh, so important is making histograms and fitting Gaussian curves, uh, normal curves to these histograms that we have a completely separate video out there for that. So so you'll want to watch that video too if you're, if you're in my class. Um, maybe you want to watch it anyway. So this is what we got for you. This is some basics in curve fitting and, and kaleidograph. Hopefully uh, it's helpful. Hopefully you learn a little bit of something right here. Have a good day, everybody.